In this video, I'm going to cover what to do in an IT job interview. I want to keep it short, so I'm going to cover three main points that you probably haven't seen anywhere else. Okay, my first big tip is to take as many interviews as you can. Practice makes perfect. So apply for every job that you think could possibly be suitable and take every interview that you get offered. If you remember your first interview, you've probably done one already, your first interview, you would have been terrified and probably not made a very good impression because when you go into that kind of environment and you're very nervous, people can see that and it doesn't give a good impression. So you want to take as many interviews as possible. Then you're going to get more and more confident and relaxed with each one. You already know what it's like. You already know the kind of questions that you're going to get asked. You know the kind of answers that go down well, the ones that don't. And because you've done it many times before, you're going to be very relaxed and very confident. And this is exactly the type of impression that you want to create. When you do anything, such as going for an interview, think about it from the point of view of the other person. Put yourself in their shoes. Imagine you get the exact same two people come in, but in one case, this person is very nervous and obviously nervous, and then another case, the person is confident. Now, not arrogant, but they're confident, they're very relaxed being there. Of course, you're going to get the better impression from the person that is confident and relaxed. And the way that you get to be like that in an interview is by doing lots of interviews already. So that's what that's what to do. You're going to be much more confident, much more relaxed. You're also going to be better in a practical sense at answering the questions as well because you'll have heard them before. Often in interviews, you'll see interviewers ask the same questions over and over. The more times you answer that question, the better you're going to get it. Again, you're going to be creating a better impression by doing that. Now, you might think, well, wait, it's a bit unethical taking all these interviews if I know that I'm not actually going to take the job. But it's not really because maybe you get there to the interview and maybe the job sounds great. Maybe it sounds like a perfect match for you and you do end up taking it. Or even if you don't take it, you're still going to meet people there and you're going to be building relationships when you do that. And maybe you give a, a good impression, maybe another better job at the same company comes up six months or a year down the line, your name goes in the hat, they remember you, you've got a great chance that you're going to get that job. Also, in the other direction, maybe the person that interviews you or somebody you meet while you're at the company, maybe you bump into them again later down the road. It's normal for that to happen. If you're in the same city, you're in the IT industry, it's a small world, you are going to meet people again. So by taking these interviews, it's a great way of networking and building relationships. Maybe you don't take the job that day, but there's a really good chance that something good will come out of it in the future anyway. So take as many interviews as you can. Anything that you get offered, even if you think you're not going to take that job, do the interview anyway. That it's a really good way to get good at interviews by doing that because you are going to be more relaxed anyway because it's not going to matter so much to you. The worst thing that you can do is turn down interviews for jobs that you think aren't perfect for you, waiting for that perfect interview. That is a terrible idea because when you do go in for that perfect interview, it's going to matter too much to you and you've had no practice, you're going to be super nervous and you're going to create a bad impression. When that perfect one comes along, you want to have done a lot of interviews already, so you're relaxed in the situation, it won't feel like such a big deal to you, and you'll perform much better. Okay, so that was point number one. Point number two is they already want you. This is me speaking from the point of view of somebody that's conducted a lot of interviews myself. And it's really hard to find a good person when you are conducting interviews. That might be surprising, but really I've had positions to fill and sometimes I've done five interviews in a day and nobody, be, nobody has been right for the job. So 
when you walk into an interview, the interviewer, they want you to be right for the job. They've probably already interviewed several people that day who haven't been right for the job. They're going to start worrying that they're not going to get anybody. Honestly, this happens more often than it doesn't. So they're desperate for you to have the job. So remember when you walk in there that the interviewer is on your side. They're not interrogating you trying to catch you out. They're just checking that you are a good fit and they're really hoping that you are. So you don't have to go in there and win the job when you go into the interview. They already want you. They wouldn't have asked you for an interview if they didn't think you were capable of doing the job. When you get an interview, they've already looked at your resume. They've decided that you're qualified to do the job. What we're doing is checking to see if you're the right fit to go into that team or not. So they already want you. They desperately want you. They already think that you are qualified. So you don't have to win them over. Basically, you just have to not blow it. So go in with that mindset. The interviewer is on your side. They want you to succeed. All you have to do is help them out with that. And the best way to do it is to relax and be yourself. But a good tip I can give you for this is when you're in the interview, imagine that you're talking with people who are your colleagues at work already. If you're already in a job somewhere, imagine that these are people that you've been working with for a year already. So you're still talking to them in a professional context. That's the way that you're going to speak but you're going to be very relaxed and confident, okay? And again, a way that you can get there is by taking multiple interviews so that you get a lot of practice and you get really good at this. Okay, so that was the first two points. The last point is about the technical interview. And a big thing here is prepare way ahead of time. And I mean way ahead of time. Don't get invited for a job interview. It's going to happen in a few days and then start preparing for that job. Like say you're going to be interviewing for the role of a network engineer. Well, you should know networking very well beforehand. Two days, three days is not long enough to learn about networking. So let's say, for example, that you're working in help desk now and you want to move on to be a network engineer. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with working in help desk. I've known a lot of people that have worked in help desk for years and years, and they're still working there, and they love it. The job suits them great. They work their nine to five on help desk. They, f they love the team. They love the place they work in. They love their job. It's great. They go home and they watch TV and then they come back at 9 a.m. the next morning and they're really happy with everything. But because you're watching this video, I am assuming that you are hoping to get interviews and move into another job role. You're wanting to proceed with your career. Well, to do that, nobody's going to do it for you. So you're going to have to put the work in ahead of time. So if you are working again, for example, on help desk and you want to work, say, as a network engineer or in the virtualization team, then when you get home from work, don't watch TV, study, read the books, do the online courses and learn this. And then that's what's going to get you ahead the, the way that you get ahead is through work and through hustle. And if you show that, you're going to be way ahead of nearly everybody else. And that's how you can really go up the IT career ladder very quickly. So don't be preparing for the job you're interviewing for two day, it, the two days that you know that you've got the interview. This should have been going on for months or for years so that you're already qualified. You know uh, the answers to the questions that they can ask you in this technical interview. Now, that said, it's normal that you will get questions wrong in the technical interview or not get them wrong, but you're not going to know the answer. I, again, I've done I guess maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 interviews of people, technical interviews, and I have never, ever seen anybody that has known the answer to every question. That is not going to happen. So don't worry about that. It's a normal thing. When you do know the answer to the question, give the right answer. When you don't know the answer, don't panic. It's normal. This is going to happen. Again, like I said on the last point, imagine that you're with colleagues that you've been working with for a year already. So imagine you're at work 
and the person at the desk next to you asks you a technical question and you don't know the answer, what would you tell them? Well, of course, you wouldn't just make up an answer, right? That would be ridiculous. Don't do that in the job interview either. The person that's asking you the question knows the answer. And if you make something up, that's going to create a very bad impression. So what to do is when you don't know the answer, just tell them, I don't know. But don't leave it at that, obviously. So for example, if somebody, if I was in an interview and somebody asked me, for a, a Windows operating system, how often does it renew its DHCP lease? Okay, honestly, and I just came up with that. Now, I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I know about DHCP. I know what it does. I know how it works. But something as specific as that, I would have to go and look it up to actually check. So if I was asked that question in a technical interview, the answer I would give would be, I'm not sure about that. But I know about DHCP, I've worked on DHCP servers before. If I did need to know that in my job, then I would look it up on Google. I would check exactly what it is. I don't want to just take a guess at it. That's a perfectly reasonable answer. That's the kind of thing you would do with a colleague that's been working with you for a year already. You would say, I'm not sure. I'll look it up on Google and get the answer for you. Okay. When you do that in interview, it's normal there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If you don't know the answer to any of the questions, that's a problem. But I mean, even if you, it, it's normal that you will get multiple, multiple questions that you don't know the answer to in the technical interview. The interview viewer will do this deliberately. If you're getting all of the answers right, then one of the things they want to check is how do you react under pressure? How do you react when you don't know the answer? So you can be sure that they will make sure that they ask you some questions that you don't know the answer to. So when that happens, relax, don't worry about it. It's normal. Just answer it as if you're talking to a colleague in normal work and you'll be just fine. Okay, that was everything that I wanted to cover. Like I said, I wanted to keep it short. If you've got any questions on any of this, then put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you do want to learn more technical skills to boost your career, have a look at my Flatbox blog. I've got a load of free courses on there for you and please give me a subscribe. Thanks.